I'm going to officially introduce myself. Dan Allen, president of the Canadian Macedonian Historical Society, and I welcome uh, you all here today. But I want to introduce you to, to Alex Nitsis, who is going to introduce our guest speaker today. Um, Alex, uh, do you want to go ahead? Okay, thank you, Dan, and welcome everyone to another one of our Zoom lectures. And we're really excited to bring you um, today uh, a lecture on the different DNA platforms that are out there, uh, because there's a lot of information and it, it's really confusing. And our presenter uh, today will, will give you an insight into that. His name is Murray Maloney. Uh, his uh, maternal grandparents were uh, from uh, Tercier. He'll talk a little more about that. Uh, and um, he certainly has, uh, has uh, um, accumulated quite the genealogical information uh, from uh, the, uh, a book on Tercier that was written by Vi uh, Vassal Stoikov. Uh, and he's amassed quite a collection of over uh, 8,400 Macedonian families. The, the other half of, of his ancestry is uh, Indigenous and Irish. And uh, he'll talk a little bit about that. But be, before um, we, we get this started, we, we certainly like to acknowledge uh, the Native people of our country, uh, those who lived in the area here in Toronto, the Mississaugas, to acknowledge the Indigenous people. It's very important that we acknowledge uh, those who came before us. Uh, and those were the Mississaugas of this uh, region. Uh, on the other part of that is we're trying to uh, preserve our heritage. And um, Murray will give you his uh, Macedonian slant on um, on genealogy and DNA. Uh, so Murray, if uh, uh, you don't mind, um, uh, we'd you, love to hear from you. Thank you. There. So um, the DNA testing landscape. Uh, so we have quite a number of, of companies there. Um, this is my presentation to you today. I'm a member of the Historical Society. I'm also a member of the the Tercia Benevolent Society, such as it is. There we go. So I'm a, I'm a retired uh, technical author and editor by trade uh, and an occasional inventor. I was a co-author and editor of a book called The Discipline of Organizing that I worked on with a professor from uh, the University of California at Berkeley. Uh, and as I mentioned, I'm a member of the Canadian Macedonian Historical Society and Tercia Benevolent Society. My One of my earliest memories of being Macedonian at all and having any knowledge of it was an envelope that sat on my mother's sewing table. It was always addressed to the Tarsia Benevolent Society and she would put small amounts of money into, into it and send it away every week. Um, the Tarsia Benevolent Society was informally established in the 1910s uh, when people started arriving in what we now call Cabbage Town. And uh, it was formally established in 1936, and I've got a copy of the Constitution there. My mother was a lifelong member. Uh, it was established as a legal entity in the 1990s, I think it was, and it was reincarnated as a Facebook group, this Facebook group. And uh, they are hosting me uh, in my attempts to work on genealogy. And so I occasionally write articles. And so, for example, the one on the left is an article about my mother and where she came from and some of the documents that uh, led me to finding out more about her and her family. And on the right is about the Pandowski family and me trying to work out a theory where maybe everybody in the village whose name is Yanko is descended from the same guy whose name is Yanko, maybe. But so far I haven't been able to prove that one. I have a, quite a group of uh, collaborators. These are people who have taken DNA tests and they've allowed me to uh, uh, set, up, set up a relationship on Ancestry where I'm their collaborator, which means that I can look at their, um, their DNA matches. And being able to look at their DNA matches and mine and, and a bunch of other people's, it helps me get a bigger picture of um, all the people that are all the cousins, basically, and, and how the cousins are intermingling. Um, so I've helped quite a few people set up their family trees and so they have consistent naming conventions and dates and things like that so that it makes it easier for 
the mechanism that's behind and stress, which I'll talk about later, um, makes that mechanism uh, work better, the artificial intelligence tools, et cetera. So here's an example of people putting up a tree on Ancestry or somewhere else. This is Ancestry, but putting up a tree and it's very private, but it's not very helpful. Nobody can connect to it. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows who your grandparents were. So here's a tree that I helped somebody put together. Chris Andanoff uh, is, is one of my collaborators. And um, so working together with, uh, with the content that, uh, that we had, we, we, we built this tree. So uh, my references, well, Chris Andonov's dad wrote a book. And uh, so Trian Andonov Georgeoff. Uh, and in that book, I found a picture of my, my dad. And I know that this author is a cousin of mine because I remember my mother talking about him and, and, and calling him a cousin. And in this book, I learned the story of Dina Vitsalameva who barred the church house door. Um, and I'm not gonna go into the whole story, but but it was quite a quite a revelation to me to, to learn this story. It mentions uh, my Baba Dina's brothers, uh, Brother Thomas and her nephews. And then we have Tercia, its history and its legacy by Vasil Stoikov. And Vasil is working on a new edition of this book. Um, and I think it's mostly ready and it's getting ready to go to the printer. And I, not, I don't have a new date, uh, a, a date for when it's going to be released, but there it is. And one of my, the other books that I've relied upon is, of course, Lillian Petrov's Sojourners and Settlers, uh, from which I gathered a lot of information about my, my mother's uncle, Nam Phillips. Uh, he was one of the first of uh, the family to arrive in Toronto and set things up here. And um, he was quite involved in, with, with St. Cyril Methodi. He was the uh, president of the church for, I think, four, four different years. So now let me tell you a little bit about DNA. So... Autosomal DNA is a blend of your parents' DNA. It's passed by your mother to your children, and we each carry about 50% of each parent's DNA on 22 chromosome pairs. So there's 22 of them, and they're pairs. That means there's a mother's side and there's a father's side of the chromosome. Okay, so you're getting information from on two different families there. And sibling DNA tends to, tends to be a little bit different blend. So your brother or your sister isn't going to have exactly the same blend of DNA as you do. When there's multiple shared segments, each segment may represent a, a, a different shared ancestor. And we'll explain that a little bit more later. So here's your classic gummy bear on the back of an app in genetics lesson. And I don't know who did this, but I want to thank them. So we start out with this red gummy bear and a yellow gummy bear. And then if you work your way all, day, all the way down to the bottom, I want you to notice the feet on the, the, the gummy bear on the furthest left and the gummy bear on the furthest right. And the gummy bear on the furthest left has a orange left foot, whereas his sibling on the far right has an orange right foot. So you, you see how genetics get spread? Now, in addition to the, the 22 chromosomes, there's the 23rd, and we call it the X chromosome, and it's the sex chromosome. Women have two X chromosomes, one from each parent. Males get a Y and an X, so they only get one X, they don't get two. And the male child receives his from his mother, and, and you know, you don't know what he's gonna get. And I, and I gotta show you the trickery behind the, the X chromosome in a minute, but the father passes his only X chromosome only to a daughter. He can't pass it to a son. So you get these weird rules with X chromosome inheritance to try and follow who's matching who and where does it come from? Where does it come from is really the issue, right? So here is, for example, a chart where we want to know where the heck did Phoebe Heard get her X chromosome from? And so if you look up the chart, you can see that there are certain people in that chart who will pass X chromosomes down to her and others who won't. And so if, if Phoebe Heard has a match on the X chromosome, we, we can only look at those ancestors where we're likely to see an X chromosome and we can, we can discount the other ones. And it's hard remembering exactly how that rule is applied. So that's why I'm mentioning it because it's, it's a really weird thing. Now, why DNA? That's, that's a different thing. So when, you, when you're going for a, a 
a DNA test, you might go to Ancestry or um, one of the other companies, and you're going to get a basic autosomal DNA test. And that's where you're going to be able to match with cousins and uncles and aunts and, and all of that. But a Y DNA test, that's only up your father's line. And, and, and only men can take a Y DNA test. Right? It's going to go from, from the son to the father to the grandfather to the great grandfather and all the way up. Now, what good is that? Well, if you've got two brothers and they want to prove that they have the same father, they both take a Y DNA test. And if it matches, they have the same father. But what if you want to prove something a little bit further away? So, for example, me and three of my cousins have taken Y DNA tests. And we've been able to prove that our third, is there second or third, third great grandfather is our third great grandfather. We know that we're on the same line as him. And so we've been able to use what's called DNA triangulation to prove that. MTDNA is matrilineal. It passes on the mother's line. Now, the thing is, a son gets MTDNA, but can't pass it. So I was able to take an MTDNA test, but my sons won't get my MTDNA. Nobody will ever get, get it from me. But a woman, the women can pass it along. And same thing we can do with triangulation to try and figure out if, if people have a common grandmother. So now, now we're going to start talking about some more stuff, individual testing. So here are, here are some of the companies where you can do a, a basic autosomal DNA test. Living DNA, Family Tree, Ancestry, My Heritage, 23andMe. I guess there are others, but uh, these, are the, these are the top ones. How do you do it? Well, most of the companies you spit into a tube. Uh, I think one of them, maybe, maybe two of them, you actually do a swab, right? So they send you a little, little Q-tips and you stick it in your mouth and you swab it around in your cheek and you put it in the tube and you seal it and you send it to them. They do a lab analysis, take six to eight weeks, and you get your, your, um, your ATDNA results. MTDNA you get from family tree, YDNA you get from family tree. So I wanted to keep this short. Most Macedonians only need to go to Ancestry. They, some of them might do an upload of their, their, their DNA to another company, and researchers might want to look at DNA Painter and GED Match, and I'm just kidding you guys. This is not really the conclusion. I just wanted to get to a short short story so we could uh, pretend that we, we, we ran through all the options, but no, there's more. So Ancestry.com. Now Ancestry has autosomal DNA tests with DNA matching. You've got family tree editing tools, which are really good, and a multi-tier service membership that supports active gene genealogy researchers. I like Ancestry because it's got the biggest database. Right? There are 30 billion records from 80 countries. And the value of your DNA test at Ancestry is you're staking out your place in the tree of life. You are marking your spot and saying, this is me. And if you can show that you're related to me, well, good for you. And maybe that'll help us build our family tree and know who our ancestors are. But by marking my spot, I'm leaving a record of, of who I am and who my family was before me. So what do you get? Well, you get your results back and they're gonna show you a DNA story, some DNA matches and some true lines. So here, my DNA story tells me I'm 50% Ireland, 23% Balkan, some other regions. I've got uh, thousands of, of matches and, and they're going to tell me something about through lines, which I'll explain in a moment. So your DNA story, it gives you your global regions, the nations and communities, and your ethnicity estimates. So here's mine. It shows that, I, <clears throat> that part of my ancestry comes from Scotland and, and uh, the Northern Ireland's there, and from Ireland, and a little bit from the western side of the United Kingdom, which is Wales. And then it shows Germany and Italy, the north part of Italy. And then you can see that big green glob, Romania, Serbia, Bulgaria, Albania, and Greece. That's what we're all interested in, right? Now, it, there was a time when, when I looked at this screen, that little oval with the yellow head in it, that wasn't there. I mean, the oval was there, but it wasn't something separate. It was just 
you were part of Albania, Northern Greece, and North Macedonia. Well, now they've introduced West Central Macedonia. You know, for me, what the big news was. And here's, here's why it's big news. <clears throat> we have now got enough of a population on ancestry. We have enough people who are showing their DNA 66,764 ancestry DNA members who are connected to this region. They've built a tree. So they've, they've, they've basically informed the, the, the artificial intelligence machine that's behind ancestry is looking at all of these trees, right? And it's saying, okay, we've got, you know, all, all these 66,000 people who are all claiming that they, their ancestors or they are from this particular geography. We better, we better mark this territory. This, this, is, uh, this is something special. This is different, right? This is a, a region that we can identify through the DNA. And that means we've reached critical mass. So that we reached critical mass back in, I think it was March or April that this happened. The more people we get tested, then, then the more focused this is going to become. And they, instead of telling me that I'm from West Central North Macedonia, they're going to be telling me that that I'm from the region of Laren or I'm from the region of Kostur. So along with your story, they, they're gonna tell you a bit about the region that you're from. So here's the story. And again, this used to not mention Macedonians much. It talked about Albanians and Greeks, but it didn't mention Macedonians and now it does. Now it talks about Slavic language speakers. It talks about the fur trade. It talks about war and immigration. It talks about the di diaspora. So this puts your, your family history in a context and a context that you're sharing with those 66,000 other people. So now I wanna show you a DNA match. So a D DNA matching compares segments on 23 chromosomes. When you've got en enough matching segments, it indicates that there's a relationship. You've got close matches, it can be up to 3,700 centimorgans. I'll, I'll tell you more about the centimorgans thing in a minute. Distant matches can be detectable with as little as eight centimorgans. So here's my brother. 50 to 57% shared DNA. 2,786 centimorgans across 45 segments. That's a big match. And Ancestry can tell. Now Ancestry can tell this in two ways that we're brothers. One, it's looking at both of our trees. And both of our trees are showing we have the same parents and we actually name each other in the trees. So, so ancestry can tell we're brothers, right? But it, it can also tell because it's looking at the DNA and saying, well, this is either siblings or you know, it's some other kind of very, very close relationship. So here's the chart, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so this chart shows depending on how many centimorgans you're matching with somebody, what your likely relationship is going to be. Now, that can be a range, you know, maybe it's an uncle. It's hard to navigate this chart sometimes trying to figure out exactly where to go, but luckily there's a little program that you can go to, which I don't have right handy, but there's a little program you can go to and you just punch in the number and it shows you a list. And it says, well, you know, the odds are that this is a second cousin the odds are 50%. And then the next one, it says the odds are 33% that it's a third cousin once removed. You know, and it gives you the odds, gives you the breakdown because that's the kind of thing you need to do when you're doing this kind of research. So here is our tree. And Ancestry is using one of its features and it's saying, oh, common ancestors. We have recognized that you have these people, Lawrence Maloney and, and Helen in, in your, tree and so does Peter. So we're gonna we're gonna tell you so that in case you didn't know, in case you didn't realize this already, and now you know this is obvious, right? But but this works for like third and fourth cousins. As long as you've got your tree built and they've got their tree built, ancestry can figure it out. And sometimes it uses more than two trees to do that. So it might look at your tree and then it might look at my tree and it's missing a part in between. But then it goes to somebody else's tree and it sees that missing part. And it says, oh, look, we can connect these people using this branch right here. Let's tell them. 
So now ethnicity estimates. So here's Peter and I, and you can see that I have a little bit more Irish than him. Not much, a little tiny bit. He has more Balkan than me. I have more Greece and Albania than him. I have more Italy than him. He has more Germany than me. He has some England. I have some Scotland and Wales. We're not matching on those. Here's my cousin. He's our first cousin. And he's got a slightly different take. His, his mother is Italian. And so he's got a lot more Northern Italy. And he's got a lot more Greece and Albania too. But we're pretty close to each other on the Balkans. So it uses your match list, it uses your family tree, it uses the family tree of others and it figures out who you are. Here's my through lines. And this will, you know, when, when, I, when I go to my ancestors, it'll, I can open that up and see, it'll show me a list of people that are related to me, that it, that it can see that I'm related to. So if you remember earlier, I mentioned my, my mother's uncle, Nam Phillips. Well, there he is on the left and he's the brother of Petra. And there are two. And in fact, it's funny because it's not showing one of them now. So Sophia's son is also a match to me. But he's got his tree set up in a way that I can't tell, or ancestry can't tell that he's a match. But it can tell that his children are. I don't know how that works exactly. It shouldn't do that. But he must have some privacy setting set up so that he's not going to show. And then the kids have that privacy setting a, a slightly different. And, um, and that's what happens. So that was a review of sort of what you get when you, when you go to Ancestry. Those are some of the things that you, you get when you go to Ancestry and you can see and you can, you, can, uh, you can search for your cousins and what have you. Family Tree also offers testing. Um, I find that I'm more Italian at Family Tree. And Family Tree lets you upload your, your, uh, your DNA from Ancestry. So you get a test at Ancestry, you can download it, and then you can go to Family Tree and upload it. And it, it doesn't cost you anything. You can just upload it into, it, it, into their site and set up a little family tree and, and walk away. And now people will be able to see that you're there. And again, it's just it's putting a stake in, in the tree of life and saying, I'm here. And other people can, can match on you. Um, family Tree is a site where you can do your matrilineal your mtDNA and your patrilineal, your yDNA test. And they also have a lot of research groups. And um, it has been essential for me in studying my Canadian native roots because they have a lot of research groups there. But you know, you know what? They don't have a lot of, they don't have a lot of Macedonian research groups. Um, so I belong to a, a Bulgarian research group, a Balkan research group. I belong to one Macedonian group, but nothing ever happens there. Um, there's very few members there. Anyway, so here's here's what it looks like when I go into um, family tree DNA. You get lots of information. They give you a different view of of uh, how you how you came to be and where you came from. This is showing your farmer, your hunter gatherer, and your middle age invader percentages. And this is showing um, matching of segments. So here we have uh, myself, my cousin, and, uh, and a distant cousin who lives in Australia. And it's actually showing on the different chromosomes, the, the places where we match. And if you see down at the bottom there, the X chromosome, that's me and my brother. So me and my brother have a big match on the X chromosome, but there's a piece that we don't match on. Here's my certificate for, of Y-DNA. It tells me all the details. Um, here's uh, my cousin's matches. On Y-DNA, we're not getting much information. It seems like we have uh, some distant matches uh, in Bosnia, in Bulgaria, but uh, we're not coming up with anything useful. Um, this is my MTDNA certificate, my, hap uh, my, my haplogroup, my mother's haplogroup. Uh, no matches. There's the Macedonian DNA research group, and uh, there's not much happening there. But there are a lot of different projects that people can join. This is a family tree looking at my, <clears throat> my cousin's haplogroup C. So this is the native haplogroup. And so you can see, see how it travels all the way over to North America, going through Siberia. 
Uh, MyHeritage also has autosomal DNA tests. They have a lot, a lot smaller population, but they do have some tools for um, DNA triangulation that makes it easier. There's your opening screen at Family Heritage. Here's it's showing you ethnicity estimates. You get different numbers, but they're basically ethnicity estimates and they're estimates. Here's my match with, uh, with Chris over in Australia and some of the details that it gives you. It makes an estimate. It, it says it thinks that we're third, third to fourth cousins, which we agree, but we don't know exactly how. Um, this is a, a, a different thing at my heritage. They have the theory of family relativity that's supposed to help you figure out how you're connected to other people. So you can see that the tree on the right, um, Lewis Edward, and on, on the left, it's Edward Lewis. See, so we've, we've written the names differently, but this is my cousin Janice. And, and so, yeah, we're connected and it's showing us how we're connected. 23 and me, um, it does give you um, y, and, y and mtDNA haplogroups, but it's not, not enough, not suffi sufficient information for more DTF research. So here's your, your ancestry composition. Um, here's your segments on the right. And your living DNA also has stuff and might. Now, here's the real conclusion. You only need to take an ancestry DNA test. You can upload to, to FTDNA or MyHeritage. You may want to take a, an MT or Y DNA test if you're, if you're trying to figure out your maternal and, and uh, paternal lines. Researchers want to, want to explore these programs. But, and one tree, Every, everyone's tree should eventually appear on WikiTree when you know what it is. What can you do? Take a DNA test, publish your family tree, connect the DNA to your tree, plant your stake in the ground, plant your stake in the ground and join a Facebook group. So there are other genealogy sites and I, there's a lot more that I could tell you. I have probably a hundred more slides. So I am going to stop sharing right now and see how glazed your eyes are and uh, and where we should go next. Basic tests um, at most of the companies run towards about $100. Sometimes, sometimes there are sales, you might get it for $60. You might, other times you might spend $110, but roughly around that. That's for a basic autosomal DNA test. Um, when you get into the uh, matrilineal DNA test, and that's, I think, I think it's also under $100 or roughly around $100. The Y DNA, DNA tests start to get expensive. And you, when you go for the full, um, the, what they call the big Y test, uh, that can get, be up to like five or $600 for that kind of test. But that's if you're a serious researcher. So the, you know, the, 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 one of the really important things I want to, I, I, I don't, don't think I emphasized, didn't, didn't get a chance to expound upon is this. For most of you, all you need to do is take a test and put up a small tree. It's people like me, people like me who are, um, who have obsessive compulsive disorder, who spend way too much time doing this kind of research. It's people like us who are going to figure this kind of stuff out, right? We're, we're not expecting uh, everybody and their Baba to sit down at a computer and try and figure all this out. But the, the important thing now is putting a stake in the ground. And the, the stake is having your DNA test and, and publishing a basic tree. And all you really need to do is go back to your Baba. If you can, if you can publish a tree that goes back to your grandparents, uh, all, all of your grandparents, or, or even a little bit further, then that's going to help the whole Macedonian community be able to connect all of the trees together. And Wikitree is what you might imagine. It's, it, it's like Wikipedia, except it's for genealogy. Okay. And so, and, and there are genealogists working on there and computer scientists, lots of people working on there. And so it's not like Ancestry where you, you have, you know, a, a million people doing a million trees and none of them are connected. The idea behind Wikitree is there's one tree for all of humanity. In order for us to figure out how we're related to each other, we still have to do the DNA test, right? And it's like, when I say that, I mean, um, you know, we can talk to each other and say, well, you know, I, oh, you know, here, here's a good example. I got a note today from someone on Wikitree who was thanking me for something that I had done, okay? 
So I went and I went and checked who they were. And there's a, there's a button you can press on Wikitree that says, what's, you know, you're looking at their profile, what's this person's relation to me? And I got an answer. And that person is my 23rd cousin once removed. Here's the thing, Wikitree knew that. Wikitree was able to look at my tree and look at her tree and see where they connected. Now, now we can't do that uh, in the Macedonian side. We can't do that, not right now. How are we going to get there? Are we ever going to get there? And if we are, then we've got to start taking tests because if we leave it to the younger kids, their DNA is going to be more diluted. It's it's you know it's it's mostly the people on the screen and all of the elders in the community that need to be taking DNA tests to put that stake in the ground. And you know we didn't we don't get to go back to Tarsia and visit our our, our gravestones. What we can do is leave a monument or leave a DNA monument behind to say, I was here. This is who I was. And you can compare yourself with me and you can see whether you're related to me somehow. And maybe if you're lucky, I've left a tree and you can connect the dots. But if we don't do that, you know, you know, last night I was going through a book that was written by the, by the missionaries in Quebec City in the 1600s. And in this book, there are native people being baptized. And there are French people who are standing as the godparents. And it's, and it's through that the information in this book, I may, I'm, I'm figuring out genealogies. But we don't have that. And we need to get it. You know, I, I've been in the library I, and I've seen those books and I know that I can't read them. But, but I now know that the technology is coming so that I can just point a camera at one of those books and it can tell me what it says. We, we have to move on this because if we don't, it, it's going to be lost. Our, our, our history is going to be lost. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Tell me about that because it, it's something that I run into a lot and, and I really don't know how to answer people um, I guess I, I guess maybe I'm past the wariness stage. I think it's to me there's too much at stake to be wary. I share your concerns about the law enforcement issue, and I always I always take turn that off. That's one of the options that the companies offer, and I always turn that off. I mean, you have that option today. It's, it's the older people really that we need most to take the tests, right? I, so I just I learned very early on uh, that if I just put I I, I was putting in um, Tercia, Laren, Western Macedonia, and it wasn't it wasn't being helpful. You know, when I was doing searches, it wasn't being helpful. I wasn't finding other people from from Tercia. So then I, I changed them all. I changed them to Tercia, Trivuno, Laren, Florina, Western Macedonia. Greece. All of a sudden, hey, it starts to recognize where I'm from. It starts to find other people from there and saying, oh, may maybe these, these relationships are meaningful to you. And so, so now it's seeing both. I didn't want to, I wasn't going to remove the names that I know the place by, but so I, so I, I supplemented it. And so I'm playing their game. But I'm winning at it. And so, 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 yeah, I mean, for, for all of us, yeah, we would have to come up with a, a mechanism for doing that. And again, I, I go back to Wikitree. I mean, um, one of, I, work, I work within a project. I mean, I work outside the project too, but I work within this one project, the Acadia project. And the Acadia project has rules about how you name places. You can't. You know, well, you know, my grandparents used to call it this. No, no, no. You don't get away with that. There's a formal name for this place. You have to use the formal name. Okay. Well, so we could, you know, within a project for, for Macedonia on Wikitree, we could establish, here are the names of the places that we know. Here are their new names. When you record these names, record them like this. 
and then everything will work. And then we'll be able to work, you know, everything will work together. But, but you know, but here's the thing. Working on, working on ancestry is great because there's so many people there and you're doing all those matches and yada, 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 right? But you're building a private tree, it's no good. But on, on WikiTree, when, I mean, once you actually know things, once you, you're certain about who people are and, and you have some dates and places, WikiTree is more and more amazing because you, you, can, you can really put information there. It's not just this little ancestry thing where you, it's got a few fields that you can fill in. With, with WikiTree, you can actually write a, a whole biography. And not only that, you can add pages to it. You can say, well, you know, to, know, to understand more about the Alinden day, and, and you could, we could write a whole history so that thousands of profiles could all point to the same history. That, because that was one of the problems I was finding, right? You try and write a biography, you're writing a biography for a dozen people, let's say in a family, you don't want to tell the whole story in each one. You want to be able to point at something and say, there's the story. Hmm. Well, it, it's certainly worth um, sitting down and talking with people. I, I'll observe that, that um, in terms of getting people to take a DNA test or to do any work on their family trees, is kind of like pulling teeth. So, so yes, there's a lot that we could do, um, and I could, and I can, I can talk about the different things that we can do. Um, I could point to examples of what, of what others can do, have done rather, um, and and I could even uh, offer some suggestions about how we could start a Macedonian project. Um, you know, and, and assemble a team and, and set some goals and, um, and establish some ways of recording all of our history. And right now, the way I'm leaning, I would lean it, you know, let, let's, 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 let's all do this on WikiTree because that's the most open place to do it. And um, it's got the right tools. It's got, it's got everything we need, but it would require a team. It would require, you know, you, you, I mean, I, I can't carry this all, um, uh, but with enough people willing to, to participate and cooperate, then, then we could do more. I mentioned earlier that Russell Stoikov will be, will be reissuing his book. Um, so, so yes, we could have a virtual, we could, it could be virtual or it could be in real time, uh, sit down and pick a family. And say okay, we're gonna we're gonna take this family and we're gonna now add this family to WikiTree, and and all of you will be able to watch it happen, and you'll be able to go in and take over a page, and say okay, I want to add information to this page, I know more, okay, see that here's here's how it works, it's a wiki, right, and the way that wikis work is, you have to you have to pitch in, right, Pe people come along and do do some part of it now so so i've got a tree that's over 80, 8400 people okay now, now not, not all of these people are related to me some of them are just our families that i've come across and added because they seem like important families somehow okay but that was a lot of work entering all that into ancestry and i can't just transfer that all over to wiki but you know there's a lot of yes there's a lot of information there and so, yes, we could do a project if we can, if we can get people to cooperate in terms of taking tests and in, and in terms of providing their information either on their own or through some facility, then yeah, it, it would be a great project. Murray, you, you spurred me on. I'm going to, I did 23andMe, but I think I'm going to go spend a hundred bucks and do the ancestry thing. Because it looks, it looks like there's payoff with with that particular company. Yeah, thank you, um, and you thank know. all of you for taking the time on this really nice fall day to reconnect with the historical society and to listen to this presentation. The last few years have been been really challenging for all of us. You know, I hope you all have been safe and continue to be well as the pandemic wanes.
Um, we feel cut off from our base of supporters and cut off still from our own physical base at Canadian Macedonian Place. And we hope <clears throat> that this is the last time that we have a virtual only uh, meeting and that we'd soon be able to resume our physical connection with each other. Um, as you know, well, most of us, uh, well, as most of us know, we, we haven't been idle over the last year. We've had a couple of interesting and successful Zoom events. Please consider volunteering your time with our board. And that's uh, my, my short remarks. Thank you.